Hey, 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 what's up? It's your boy, man. Y'all been sitting there waiting for me. I got lost in the train of thought. So I was taking this device here off of the wall so I can have it in my hand as a prop. Can y'all hear me? Okay, this is the world famous. Maybe hold on for a minute. Can you wait a minute? 15 minutes. I think we got enough time to do that. Oh, yeah. This is the world famous, infamous, often misunderstood. Not liked off, but very loved by those who know how to use it. Epicenter, and what this what thing does is it restores to restoration. See, digital based restoration. It never said anything about creation. Hey, you hold on a second, brother. Hold on one minute. Oh yeah, it never said anything about creation. It's not creating anything. Okay, it is. Uh, restoring lost information. Well, not lost information. The harmonic that the recording engineers took out of the music to give you, because they really thought that sure your system couldn't handle it. Particularly way back when this device was created back in the 90s. From 1990 to today, this thing has been stored. It, still, it hasn't changed the design, its structure, what all it can do. Those like myself who know how to use it, love it. On, It's not used for in all areas, though. <coughs> Meaning that not all genres of music. Some music you don't need it at all. Some music, it can, if the music, if you're using it, doing the music that has where it said it, <laughs> you, it will take away your base. So you gotta know when you gotta know when to use this thing and when not to. It's dominant it's not it's not it's not if it's if a song they say if a song already has bass in it, then it's gonna it's gonna take the bass away. That that's true. That's true. It, it does lower it does it's gonna detect something and go a whole octave lower and if it's already in low it's gonna take you beyond what your wolfers can play so you won't hear anything. That's true. So you got to know how to set this device. And one of the one thing, things to understand about setting devices is that the wide knob is telling the maximizing surface, this the first knob here, how far left and right do you want to go from the frequency that you're trying to set here? Sweep, sweep, sweep till you find this frequency. And these numbers go from 28 to 63 from 28 to 63 so if you're turning the knob here to the farthest extent you're telling the, you're telling the frequency that are, that are at this range I want you now to increase based on what you hear at 120 which is an octave higher I'm just giving you an example I'm, I'm not I'm not uh, pinpointed, but I do know that if you do have, you got this knob turning all the way here to 60, right? And you got your enclosure tuned to 40 hertz. <laughs> I would recommend that. Uh, tuning to no one. Uh, you'll be fine because this knob is saying widely, it's look, you're looking at 60 through 68. Go all the way back down. Let's say this knob for turning this is 10 frequencies forward and backwards. And if you turn the knob here, it's five frequencies forwards and backwards of 63. And if you turn here, it's just you no know, focus on 63. So let's say you turn all the way over. No, let's say right at, at the end, it takes that you can feel. And you got the knob set here, 63. Remember the knob to the right. This, mean, this doesn't mean go lower. To search for a frequency, this means it goes higher to search for a frequency. If you really want to go, it, it starts at I think twenty three or twenty eight. That's what we hear. But understand what's going to happen if you had it set this low, you're not going to hear nothing because it's going to look for frequency that is in this range, and when it find it, it's going to drop a half octave. It's going to look for frequencies a half octave higher than this, and then it's going to bring that up so that you can hear it. Does that make sense? Okay, let's, because y'all thinking, 
Oh, it's going to magnify 23. No, 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 no. It's going to search and find if there's any 23 in the song, which means it's going to go a couple of octaves higher, a couple of octaves higher to see if it's there. If there's a harmonic missing there, they can be amplified here and still be in thing with the music and sound good, and then it will give you that frequency. And if your equipment can handle it, it's going to sound amazing. I doubt your equipment going to be able to handle it. I don't know, because you got big boys out there now, Criminal Audio, uh, Sundown Audio, Kicker Nails in Game, uh, Dealer Designs, Cosmos, oh man, so many, DC Audio, there's so many people out there that let you experience and feel music in the 20s and 30s. It's really, I mean, well, I'll let you hear music in the 30s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do that with some H, man. And it's because of this device. It is because of this device. People say, oh, man, it's just got the opposite in there. Yeah, so what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Man, what's wrong with that? What's wrong? It's because he got, well, you get one. Ain't like, that's the only one they got. They sell them. And I'm showing you how to use it. I'm telling you how to use the Joker. It can, I'm taking H, and I also changed the PF. Okay, now, it's getting too far. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. So you, when you turn this, let's say you turn the sweep and say five figures at 63. And that's what I want to restore. And, you're, and your box tune to 40, you're fine. But let's say your box tune to 40 and you bring this knob all the way back from half from 20 to 63 is 20. So you bring it back around here. It's about 38, 40. You're still good. You're still good because it's going to look for frequency a little higher than that. And if your box is tuned in the and your your box tuned to forty is right right about there, it's gonna it's gonna be okay. Anything below that, you're gonna be in trouble. And that's gonna be dictated by how you got this wide knob. So you got this wide knob at twelve o'clock. That say it said at forty and thirty five and forty five. Bring those up as like a little like a tent, gradually together. We'll roll off on both ways above and below 40. Bring those frequencies up. You're in closer to 40. You're going to be pretty much be all right if you, it would depend on what size driver you have. Depending on what size driver you have. You got a tune to 40, and you got this thing set frequently probably at 40, and you got this at frequency both equally five. Five. You turn it this way, it said no, just center just on 40. This is saying four, This is saying thirty-five and forty. This knob here. You control on how wide that it brings up the tent, right? Got a narrow focus here. Whatever this say, stay right there. Bring it up to twelve o'clock. Open it up some. You got to say it forty. Give me thirty-five and forty-five. Bring it all up. Let me go up. Go harmonic above forty. So it's gonna be looking at stuff at maybe eighty and ninety, which is music that. To, the predominantly does not have bass, and now it's going to give you some. The missing harmonic house recording in the studio, and you get to hear that and feel it, and it sounds crazy. Now, let's say you turn this wide knob all the way over. Now, let's say it goes to 10 hertz. So now it's going 40, to, they're going from 30. It's center on the sweeps on 40, and it's going to 50. You're good if you're in close to turn to 40. And, and you go from 40 to 50. But if you're going, going down to 30, depending on what size driver you got, 10 hertz below tuning with this boy right here. With the factory setting, we ain't got to that point. It's going to hurt some small drivers. It's going to hurt some, especially how you got the base output jump. It's going to hurt some small drivers. So that's why I don't which mean you get no factory box, a factory tuned system. But one of these, yes, it's going to make it like, seem like your woofers ain't got no bait. Because it's going to be storing notes that your woofers can't play. You're talking to go 10 hertz below tuning with a lot of power. And if you ain't got the style electrical, this is going to expose that too. So in the right, in the wrong hands, this little device will expose your system. If you know what you're doing with it, it will make your system sound exceptional. And you'll do amazing thing with eights. And the reason why, because with this device, my PFM chip, my PFM chip, it comes with a PFM chip of 33, which is very loud. I think I'm going to switch back over for a little while to show y'all some differences in the truck. But one of the things that's helping me meter so low with them eights is this boy right here. And my low tune enclosure, tune to 33 hertz. And I know where to set my, I know exactly what, I know exactly where to set this. So that it looks for harmonics right close, just a little bit 
trying to get like 35, I'm tuning to 33, or 34, somewhere between there. And then I got my wide, not that wide, because they're just eights. So I got it 33, and I got my, my wide set a little bit over, so it might be going like maybe four or five hertz either way. And since I'm tuned low, I'm fine. And then sometimes, depending on if I want to meet it high, I might tell the fine notes a little higher because my porch tune lower and I'm able to get a more, more balanced sound. Because since my, since I'm not going to need a lot of power with tuning because the port's going to take over the work and the woofers ain't going to be moving that much, I might ask the epicenter, hey, give me the peak at higher volume. And then if you find something lower, my enclosure will pick it up. And that's why I'm doing the 140s at 30s at. This little device right here. But the, this device will expose your system. You know what turned me on this device, man? I'm talking about way, 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 way. I'm talking about in the 90s. In the 90s. This, this, this is how old this device is. I think this is the very first restore because people was taking eights and uh the w6 eights and tens and doing amazing just amazing things with it and that's why I, I still love it today let me, let me see if i can get to a couple of comments uh what you say you see what you say baby yeah a couple of comments a couple of questions uh all right boom show chat there we go okay let's see what we got here Okay, good morning. Epicenter is supposed to have a full range signal as output, so running the LC will be feed is just a sub signal. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do a part two video on that, too, so I can go into part two and get really get into it. But this is just, I'm going to ask some questions, and I'm going to do some more Epicenter videos. I see it's a very, very heavily discussed topic. <laughs> a lot of people love these things. Some people hate them. Some people love them. Let's see what we got here. Are you, or B, yeah, Ricardo, I'm going to be too obvious for a dealer. Can I use Epicenter with LC2i Pro? Yeah, uh, you don't need Epicenter with LC2i Pro. No, you don't need Epicenter with LC2i Pro. Because this, it's going to, this is, whether you use the LC2i Pro, you're trying to take a factory signal and turn it over to RCA and send it to your sub. But your Epicenter needs a full signal. So if it had a line output converter, if you could convert this, if it had a line output converter to take the signal, it needs a signal before anybody touches it. And it needs a full signal. Everything. It needs to come before the crossovers, any DSPs. It needs the whole signal. And let it do its thing. And then let it go into the DSP. All right? This this needs the full signal. Or you can put, you can put the DSC in front of it as long as the DSP is sending it, it the entire signal. Because then in that case, this needs to come after the DSP before the amp. This needs to come out of DSP before the amp. Okay? But it's much easier you put it after the DSP than put it before because if you put it before, you're going to see some things that ain't going to make no sense to you. <laughs> it ain't going to make sense to nobody. Let me see what I got some more questions. Uh, man, that was my boy. That was my boy Twine. He must know I'm live. Or he might think I'm live in something else. I'm live on I'm I'm live on the phone, man. This phone right here. Uh, but the process never is a full range. Any more questions about this episode? Because I'm going to. How does it impact the bass when you're using these bass knob on your amp? Hmm. Hmm. How does it impact the bass when you're using the bass knob on the amp? Well, it will because you are now you're. You need to know how to adjust both at the same time because it's going to restore frequency. Now, you know, as you go down the hertz, more power is being used than when you're in high hertz. So as you play in the song, I don't ever – as I I just turn my volume now because I got my everything set correctly so that no matter what, I'm not clipping. No matter what I do with my episode now, when I look at the – my my on my M two thousand, I'm never clipping, never clipping. Whether I whether I use it or don't use it, I'm never clipping. What it is happening, you know, them them woofers are getting experience experience some trouble, and that's what I do because they're getting exposed to harmonics that 
where the, if the enclosure ain't too right, sometimes the harmonics be real, real low. And I know that I'm going too far for them eights. Way too far. I need a bigger driver. And that's what I'm saying about the episode. But I'll get in there tell on the next video when we take it apart and let y'all see the inside of it. Peace, get up in your box, man. Four four six nine four four eight one eight. And as always, please listen responsibly. And don't buy no kind of fan kickers, man. Don't buy no wood nickels, y'all. Don't buy no wood nickels out there, man. Y'all need to cut that mess out.